Hey there, Vinyl community. My name's Tom. You're watching High Rent District. Uh, I haven't done a, a gear video in quite a long time, so I just kind of want to just show you what I've got, what I'm using as my uh, my main system. Uh, it's kind of a timestamp thing for me, too. You know, I've, I, I've changed gear throughout the years and kind of want to have something to just look back on when inevitably one day this changes. Uh, so... Let me just uh, turn the camera around and uh, show you what I'm using. All right, so here's a uh, quick look at uh, my system. Speaker there, speaker there. I took uh, the grill off one of them. I have to refabric these speakers. We'll start with the speakers. Uh, speakers are uh, Dynaco A25s. They're, uh, I'm guessing from, they're some, from sometime in the 70s, early to mid 70s, I think. It is a matched pair. Dynaco A25s. Uh, don't mind the uh, green record shelving. <laughs> I used to have them in a room that where the walls were olive. And, uh, now they're in a room that's not, and they, uh, they're kind of garish a little bit, but uh, I don't feel like buying new ones or painting these, so that's the way it's going to stay for now. Uh, oh yeah, you know, I kind of raised the... Uh, I put some uh, feet on it. Uh, what the hell is it called? I think Capita. Just to raise them up off the floor a little bit. And then just kind of a couple of doors in there. Anyway, I have too many records. I could... Uh, Easily cut that amount of records, and there's some more laying around the house. Uh, I can cut that amount in half, and I probably will, but uh, that's a story for another day. Uh, let's see what I do. Okay, so we talked about speakers. Um, oh, as far as what we're listening to, uh, we're listening to a CD. It's uh, Svetlana's Naked Horse Rider. They're uh, supposedly a Russian band that uh, is really out of Italy, but uh, I dig them. You got, uh, let's see, Must Break You, Crimea River, I like that, uh, Sacrifice Your Orifice, Tinky Winky, Go Fuck Yourself, uh, Polonium Chaser, and Revenge. They're a good, fun uh, punk band. Uh, anyway, I guess, uh, let's see here. Let's talk about the turntable. You can see that. It's a Harman Kardon uh, T65C. I think it's from the mid-80s. So look at the controls. It's got, uh, you can tighten up the speed if you need to. The speed uh, control is excellent. It's got a quartz lock. And then two buttons to change the speed from either 33 and a third or 45 RPMs. Then you got lift and cut buttons. The uh, tone arm, if it matters, it says a uh, micro race tone arm. It's got the anti skate weight there. It's a low mass turn on tone arm. And I've got a Shure, uh, that was it, uh, M97XE, uh, I think, cartridge on there. The platter is uh, heavy. It's I think it's uh, like three and a half pounds, maybe a little bit less than that. But uh, it's the original mat, which is kind of a not quite. I don't know if it's rubber or what it is, but it's meant to be the mat and the slightly depressed uh, label area, and then this weight, which just you know sits on top of there. It's supposed to really dampen resonance. Um, it, sound, it really does sound good to me, anyway. Uh, moving on from the turntable is a receiver. Kind of dig the green lights. I like, you know, I like the color green. What can I tell you? It's a Harman Kardon uh, 730 twin powered. Let's look at the controls. It's a uh, 40 watt per channel uh, going into eight ohms and. My speakers are 8 ohm speakers. It, uh, it has two phono inputs, oddly enough. Oh, and one neat thing about this turntable, going back to that, I don't know if you can really see it. 
but uh, it's got a little uh, dial there where you can adjust the capacitance. So you kinda, you're pretty flexible on the cartridges you can use on this. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the receiver, AM, FM. The, uh, I find that the contour button here, it's kind of a, a neat little help. I usually, you know, usually you're supposed to, I guess the theory is you shouldn't like adjust the uh, bass or treble or, or anything, just have a, you know, a pure sound. But uh, then, you know, I read the manual for this thing and it says that the contour button uh, boosts the bass at uh, low listening levels. I'm usually not cranking this terribly loud. Uh, so the first time I hit that, that button, it's like, wow, that really made the, the music come alive. Uh, and I guess I'll jump down to the, even though there's uh, two phono inputs on this uh, receiver, I actually use the uh, a Parasound uh, Z Phono, uh, phono preamp. The, uh, yeah, what was it, about a year ago? I, I've, I've had this preamp for a few years, but I was using the receiver without it. And I just kind of like the feeling that the records were sounding just slightly off. And uh, when I plugged the, when I just went with the preamp instead of the built-in phono amp on the receiver, uh, you know, records just came back to life. Uh, I, you know, preamps, external preamps, I think do make a big difference to begin with. Uh, and you know, this is like a watt, you know, a 30, 40 year old receiver or whatever. You know, it probably the, the preamp, the phono preamp in it is probably you know in need of uh, being better. I don't know. Anytime you go with separates, it's going to sound better. I don't want to be separate everything. I think that gets a little uh, crazy, expensive wise, and got enough things plugged into the wall. Don't need more. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let me move on. CD player is what we're listening to right now. It's a Marantz uh, CD 5004. It's a, it's, it's a solid CD player. I think I bought it maybe around five years ago, and at the time it was about 350 bucks. Uh, if I recall, I think it has uh, separate uh, DACs for each channel. It's supposed to give better separation. I don't know, it's a good sounding CD player. It's, it sounds better than what I've had before. Uh, and you know, if I'm not mistaken, jumping back to the amp, uh, the receiver, the Harman Kardon uh, 730, Twin powered. It's a uh, separate transformers. I'm pretty sure in there for each channel. So it's a uh, kind of a unique design, especially at the time. And uh, I'm happy with the sound. Uh, we'll jump down to the tape deck. Uh, I think it's from like 1988, 1990, somewhere around there. It's a Nakamichi uh, CR-3A. I think like 3A is, you know, the A is for America and there was a 3E for, I think, Europe. Otherwise, I think they're the same. But uh, it's a simple tape deck, uh, three head. You know, when I was looking for a tape deck, I don't have a whole lot of tapes, but, you know, I've got a couple older ones that I want to be able to play when I want to play them. So, you know, here we are with the tape deck. It's, uh, I was looking for three head, uh, something without auto reverse. And, uh, you know, just basic double... B, w, B, and C, and um, it's got all its coverage. So it's a nice tape deck. So uh, that's really the, the entirety of the system. It's nothing super fancy, but uh, you know it does a job. And uh, you know I just kind of piece different pieces together over the years. And I think I'm at a place where I'm finally you know happy enough uh, with it, where I don't feel like I need to change anything unless something goes. Uh, Bang Bang's kind of giving me a face over here, but uh, she's thinking I'm kind of full of something. She's like, nah, whatever. She's digging it. So anyway, there you go. There's my stereo. I'm going to stop rambling. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you later.